Hey everyone, I'm Fred Tolan with Invisio, and this is another in a series of online videos that will spotlight our tactical communication and hearing protection products, as well as provide tips and tricks for the users. In this episode, we'll be covering two different products, both the R30 and the R30 single button wireless PTTs. These lightweight, compact solutions enable you to remotely operate any of your V-Series Gen 2 control units. They're submersible to two meters, meet all current mill specs, and have replaceable batteries to ensure you're always powered up and ready to go. We'll start with the standard R30 wireless PTT. Looking at it, you'll see it's very small, extremely lightweight, weighing only 39 grams. It has two PTT buttons on it, PTT1 on the top and PTT2 just below it, as well as a mode button at the very bottom. This is the tan version, but it also comes in black if needed. With these buttons, you'll be able to remotely do all the same things you can do on your control unit. Looking at the back of the R30, you can see it has a rail mount, so you can secure it to your rifle if you'd like. It comes with a molly mount as well if you want to secure it on a vest or carrier. You just have to remove the two screws in the center, remove the rail mount, replace it with the molly clip, and then replace the screws. If you look closely, you can see these slots, two on each side. These are for utilizing the zip ties that come with the system. You just put the zip ties through the slots and you can attach it to pretty much anything you want to include steering wheels or even ballistic shield handles. Or you could just keep it in your pocket if you're doing low vis operations. There are plenty of options available to fit your specific mission needs. We also have these screws at each corner of the unit. These are what we would unscrew if we wanted to change out the battery. It utilizes a lithium CR2450 battery just like the one used in digital watches and vehicle key fobs. To replace the battery, you just have to remove the backplate and housing using a T8 bit. The T8 bit also works to remove the rail mount, which makes removing the backplate easier, but it isn't necessary. The screws for the backplate and the mounting options are different sizes, so you want to make sure you don't mix them up. Once the backplate is removed, carefully remove the circuit board and then take out the old battery. It helps to have something you can push the battery out of the housing with. I just use the precision screwdriver to push it far enough that I can pull it out with my fingers. Next, you replace the battery, making sure the positive end matches up with the positive etching on the housing. Then you just replace the circuit board, ensuring the guidance pin is lined up with the hole in the circuit board, and then replace all the screws on the back plate, ensuring they're nice and tight. The battery should last you a couple years of steady use, which is assisted by the R30's automatic power saving mode. So there are a couple ways you can set this up depending on what V-Series Gen 2 control unit you're using. If you have a V10 Gen 2, you can pair up to seven of these to mimic PTT1. PTT2 on the R30 wouldn't do anything, but you could change your hear through levels or turn off the situational awareness entirely with the mode button. With the V20 Gen 2, you can also pair up to 7R30s, getting all the functionality of both PTT1 and 2 and the mode button on each of them. If you're utilizing a V50 or V60 Gen 2, it gets a little more interesting. As with the first two control units we covered, you can pair several R30s to PTT1 and 2, but you can also do what we call extended pairing. With extended pairing, you can have one R30 mimic PTT1 and 2 and have another mimic PTT3 and 4 giving you the full functionality of our most capable control units, all remotely. Getting these paired is very easy. You just need to hold down PTT1 on your control unit, or in the case of the V10, the only PTT, before you power it up. For the purpose of this video, we'll be pairing the R30 to a V60 Gen 2. So without power going into the control unit, you want to press and hold down PTT1. Once you turn on the power and the system starts, you just release the PTT, and pairing mode will be initiated. I find it much easier to do this with the headset in because you'll be able to tell when it's powered up because the hear through will kick in and you'll hear a voice prompt in your left ear that says PTT pairing mode initiated. Then you release the PTT on the control unit. Once the pairing mode's activated, it will run for the next 60 seconds. From here, you just take your R30 and press any button to wake it up. I like to press the mode button, but it doesn't matter. Give it a few seconds to connect, then accomplish four quick presses of PTT1. After that fourth press, you'll get another voice prompt letting you know the PTT PTT pairing pairing was successful. successful. Now this R30 is paired with PTT1 and 2 on your V60 Gen 2 control unit. 
After you successfully paired your R30, you'll hear a continuous beep for the next minute. Those beeps are for the extended pairing mode I talked about earlier. Since I'm using the V60 Gen 2, which has four PTTs, if I take another R30 in that one minute extended pairing mode, wake it up, and do those four quick presses, this R30 is now paired to PTT 3 and 4. This time you'll hear a voice prompt telling you, extended PTT pairing successful. I can now do everything with these two R30s that I could do with the actual V60 Gen 2. If you want multiple R30s to just mimic PTT 1 and 2 after you've successfully paired your first R30, you can do a quick press of PTT 1 on your control unit and it will exit extended pairing mode. Then you just repeat the pairing process until you have as many as you want paired, up to seven. Just like with our control units, care and maintenance is a breeze. Just wipe any excess dirt off it with a moist, lint-free cloth. You can also submerge it in water and then just let it dry. Just make sure your back plate is nice and sealed before you do that if you've swapped out the battery, as we don't want to get any water inside there. Make sure you store it in a dry, well-ventilated area without excess weight on top. Easy. Now that we've covered the R30 wireless PTT, let's take a look at the R30 single button, or R30 SB, as I'll refer to it from here on out. As you can see, this one has a larger form factor and only one button. Unlike the R30, the R30 SB does not have a mode button, so this is strictly a remote PTT. Its larger size makes it ideal for users who are wearing PPE and using gloves that would make it difficult to find a PTT, like firefighters, hazmat personnel, or even bomb squad members. It's very easy to activate, even when it's under your clothing or the fabric of your gear. That being said, it works great in a standard military or LE capacity as well. This one is currently only available in black, but tan will be an option in the future. It only weighs 62 grams, so very lightweight. The PTT is also a full service button, so there isn't a sweet spot you need to find to push it down and transmit. There are no dead spots. If you only catch the edge of it and not the center, it's not a problem. You'll still be able to get out your important messages. It has a really nice tactile feel to the press, and in case your gloves are too thick to feel that, it has a nice pop, which lets you know you're keyed up too, which is very useful. It also comes with a fitted protective ring that snaps on firmly and recesses the PTT a little bit in case you're worried about inadvertently keying it. It can be removed if you change your mind. Best way to do that is to just push down on the PTT with your thumb and pull up on the ring with your other four fingers. It's a tight fit, so it'll take some force, but it does come off. If we look at the back of the R30SB, you'll see it has two screws in the center. These are there for whatever mount you choose to use. Unlike the standard R30, this one comes with just the Molly clip. There are several attachment options to include a fixed alligator clip or one on a swivel that can be purchased depending on your needs. We also have these four screws on the outer edge of the unit, similar to the ones you found in the standard R30. These are what you would remove to replace the battery. This one also uses a CR2450 battery and the replacement procedure is pretty much the same. Just remove these four screws with the T8 bit Remove the backing from the R30SB, pull out the circuit board with the affixed battery housing, remove the old battery, replace with the new one, ensuring the positive end is lined up with the positive etching on the housing, and then replace the circuit. Now this one doesn't have the guidance pin like the last one, instead it has these three little guide half moons that line up with the circuit board, only one way. So just make sure they're oriented properly, and then screw the backplate back on. Again, the battery should last you a couple years of steady use. Activating pairing mode in your control unit works the same way. You just have to hold down PTT1 before you power up your control unit, then power it up, receive the voice prompt PTT pairing mode initiated, and then release PTT1. Just like before, you'll have a 60 second window to pair your remote device. So I've activated pairing mode. Now I just have to press the PTT on the R30SB to wake it up, and then do four quick presses and I'll get a voice prompt telling me PTT pairing successful. successful. R30SB is now paired to my control units, PTT1, allowing me to push out on my connected devices. Now, just like before, after the unit is paired, it will continue to beep for the next minute, which gives me that extended pairing window. If I were using two radios and I wanted to pair one R30SB to each, I just have to take another R30SB, press a button to wake it up, and then accomplish four quick presses, and that unit will be paired to PTT2. I can place each of these R30SBs on either side of my body, 
remotely transmit to either radio. The same logic works with a dual net radio. I could have one paired to net A on my narrow band and one paired to net B, my wide band. Or if I just want several R30 SBs to replicate PTT1, I just have to pair the first one, then press and release PTT1 in the control unit to stop the extended pairing window, then repeat the pairing process from the top. Just like with the standard R30, I could pair up to seven of these to that one PTT. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Let's say I'm running a dual net radio in COM port 1 and another single net radio in COM port 2. I could pair the standard R30 we covered first to replicate PTT 1 and 2 on my dual net, have it mounted on my carrier or my rifle, and then while the control unit is in extended pairing mode, I could pair the R30 SB mounted on my carrier to push out on the single net, which is PTT 3. Or if I'm running a single net radio in a cell phone, I could pair the R30 SB to the radio connected to COM port 1 and then pair the R30 in extended pairing mode to the cell phone cable in COM port 2, allowing me to use both these buttons for my phone only. This unit would be used solely for my radio and this one would be used solely for my cell phone, with PTT1 being used to talk on the phone, either by pressing and holding the button when I talk and releasing when I'm done, or by doing a quick press and latching it for hands-free communication and PTT2 would be used to answer the phone or hang it up. So I just said all those words to let you know both of these wireless devices, the R30 and the R30SB can be used together, allowing you a lot of options for how you want to set up your kit. There are so many different possibilities for how these products can be utilized together. I could spend the next 10 minutes going over them and probably not scratch the surface. That being said, you can always reach out through our website for information on a specific setup you're looking to utilize or to get connected to the sales manager covering your area to discuss your needs and find the best solution we can offer. There are also a lot of different examples in the user manuals to help you narrow down what you're trying to do. Care and maintenance for the R30SB is the same as the R30. Wipe it down, rinse it, ensuring the back plate is on, tight if you've swapped out the battery or taken it apart, let it dry, done. Store in a dry, well-ventilated area, and you'll be good to go. Just one more thing before we close out this video. It is possible to turn off the wireless capability of your Gen 2 control unit if there's a security concern. It's very simple. You just have to hold the mode button, then conduct a short press of PTT1 followed by a long press. Depending on which mode it was in, you'll hear one of two voice prompts, wireless PTT enabled or wireless PTT disabled. Then you can release the mode button and you'll be all set. And that will do it for this video covering the R30 and the R30 SB wireless PTTs. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our website. We hope you found this video helpful and informative, and thank you for watching. PTT pairing mode initiated. PTT pairing successful. Wireless PTT enabled. Wireless PTT disabled.